Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today I have prepared two multiply choice questions for you. As usual I recommend you to pause video here, try to solve each problem on your own first and when you would be ready you can run video again and you can compare your answers with my answers and explanations. So here is the first question. The gene A exhibits incomplete dominance. What can uh, we expect about the offspring from the mating of two heterozygotes? So in incomplete dominance we have two alleles and uh, two alleles would be for example uh, let's take a trait uh, like a color of uh, flowers so we may have a dominant allele A and recessive allele A. Dominant allele A would code for the normal uh, protein that produce red pigment and uh, recessive allele A would be uh, the same gene as you see gene A but would be defective and wouldn't uh, produce normal protein so uh, color of the plant, color of the petals would be white so what uh, different combinations we may have in diploid organism of these two alleles uh, the first combination can be uh, for example capital A capital A so in this case we would have uh, plants with red flowers another combination can be small a small a and uh, flower would have white color and if we cross these two uh, plants the resulting genotype and all the progeny would be uh, all the progeny would have one dominant allele from parent one and one recessive allele from the second parent and color of the plants in incomplete dominance would be pink so would be intermediate between two parents and why this happen this happen because uh, in this heterozygous form plant uh, would have one normal allele that would produce normal uh, red pigment and one defective allele that wouldn't produce any pigment at all and uh, sometimes uh, when we have one normal allele one uh, defective allele uh, plants can over express production of the normal allele but sometimes plants uh, uh, wouldn't be able to overexpress production of the normal allele that means that uh, production of the pigment would be twice uh, less than in homozygous dominant form and this of course would affect um, the color of the plant it would be pale red or pink and uh, this is how incomplete dominance works and of course if we have to cross two parents that is heterozygous whose genotype is capital A and small a so one parent and genotype of the second parent would be the same if we build a Punnett square we can predict uh, outcome of such a cross genotypes and phenotypes would be as follows capital A capital A here capital A and small a here capital A and small a here and small a small a here so let's take a look at the genotypes and phenotypes as you see this genotype would produce red flowers this genotype would produce white flowers and heterozygous genotype would produce intermediate color in flowers so would be pink just like uh, their parents uh, heterozygous parents would produce uh, pink color in um, plants in flowers so as you see the ratio would be one red to two pink to one white so which answer to choose and as you see the correct answer would be answer B 
phenotypic ratios that match uh, the genotypic ratios. And as you see, genotypic ratios match here phenotypic ratios. So answer B. Next question. In humans, the dominance uh, relationship between the A and B alleles in the ABO blood group uh, system is an example of, and we have to choose from these four answers. Imagine that this is surface of the red blood cell. Uh, on the red blood cell, we may have uh, different types of antigens. For example, if this is going to be blood group A, uh, antigens here would be A, A antigens. And in the uh, serum, we can find antibodies B. So if uh, B antigens would be present on the surface of the red blood cell, antigens B would attack such uh, red blood cells and would kill them. That's why we cannot um, transfuse blood from person who has uh, blood group B to the person who has blood group A, because uh, those antibodies in uh, serum would attack uh, those cells and would kill them. Now let's take another example, red blood uh, of the blood group B on the surface of this um, red blood cells we would have uh, antigens B and in the serum we would have antibodies A. So as you see this antibodies doesn't match uh, antigens so these antibodies wouldn't attack uh, the oven cells, the oven red blood cells. But but as you see, this antibodies A match uh, antigens A. So once again, if we trans transfuse uh, blood from a person who belongs to this blood group to the person who belongs to this blood group, uh, we would see that uh, such blood would be rejected and uh, antibodies of the uh, blood group B would attack uh, red cells of the blood group A. And yet one more example. Imagine that we have a person that belongs to the blood group A, B. So on the surface of uh, red blood cells, we may find uh, two types of uh, antigens. We can find antigens a and antigens B. And what kind of um, antibodies we can find in the serum? There are not going to be any antibodies here at all. Because otherwise such antibodies, whether it be A or B, would attack the oven cells and would kill them. So uh, in the serum of people who belong to the blood group AB, we do not have any antibodies A or B. And uh, as you see, the surface of uh, red blood cells has both um, antigens A and antigens B. So uh, this is example of the co-dominance, when we have both traits expressed simultaneously. And this is answer C. And by the way, in the ABO blood group system, we have not only allele A and B, but three alleles, A, B, and O. Alleles A and B would be co-dominant to each other, but allele O would be um, recessive to both allele A and B. So ABO blood group system, uh, show us example not only of the codominance but also of the simple dominance allele a and b are dominant over the allele o and codominant to each other and this is all for today thank you for attention please subscribe for my new videos that i post almost every day thumbs up if you like this video please write your comments questions if you have any 
and see you in the next video. Goodbye.